I don't sit when I give presentations usually, so I may stand and like pace awkwardly. Perhaps it's a theatrical thing, but that's fine. But I'll try to sit for a moment as we begin this very serious discussion. <laughs> so um, the great thing about a conference like this is you can hear all these presentations get super excited about role playing. And you're like, wow, that's great. This is some great new theory I can look at. It's just so exciting. And all I want to do is just go run and create a new LARP. And just like the whole world is at my feet. And then you hear my presentation is not going to be one of those <laughs> Mine is going to make you say, why would I ever want to run a LARP? Why would anyone else ever want to run a LARP? How does this exist still? How has this not stopped being in existence? We're going to explore that today together. <laughs> so we're going to start with a few little cartoons. Just imagine they're talking about LARP here. Great little product, but the liability could eat you up. Sadly, that's true with LARP as well. So a few disclaimers before we begin. I'm an attorney, but I'm not your attorney. <laughs> it's important to say, sometimes people misinterpret legal advice. As I gave you specific legal advice for your LARP, you should not say that you spoke to an attorney who told you this, and therefore you can be, um, find that some sort of defense. No, you should listen to what I have to say, but you're not my client. I don't even work for a law firm by which you could hire me, so it makes it even harder. I work for the government and doing something that has nothing to do with this. But uh, I enjoy this, and I'm a lawyer. I went to law school, and I can study the law. And uh, for an academic paper in the law, unlike maybe psychology or kind of a case study, what we do is we look at cases through whatever jurisdiction we decide to limit it. Here, because we have people from all over, mainly the United States, I'll get into this, why that's not quite as limiting as it sounds. But uh, look at them all across the United States, not just Texas, not just Eastern United States, Western United States. So let's do a little overview. The main uh, thesis or hypothesis, we don't really do that in legal academic papers, but LARP organizers unknowingly take significant legal liability upon themselves without realizing it. That's always a dangerous combination. So while the legal concerns faced by LARP organizers may seem novel, I mean, we're having wizards shoot fireballs at each other. There's no way, you know, what could a judge or a court know about this or previous. When you kind of peel that away and you look at what a judge or a court would think about, you can find that it's not quite as unique as you think. Really, at the end of the day, it's a social gathering of people. Sometimes it's commercial. Sometimes you're trying to make money with your LARP. Sometimes you're not. Sometimes it's just friends getting together and playing a game. And it turns out that that is a very important distinction legally. And we'll get into that. Number one area that we're looking at here where things where you get in trouble is serving alcohol at a LARP or anything else. Most of the case law that comes up, most of the time you can really get yourself in trouble has to do with alcohol. The easiest way to skip two thirds of this presentation is to just not serve alcohol at your events. But we're gonna get a little more detail than that. So in other areas, liability for actions and crimes committed by your staff or your um, volunteers. And just so we understand, liability, you wouldn't actually go to jail, we're saying, for hiring a staff who does something bad. It would be that they could sue you and ruin your life and make you declare bankruptcy and you lose your mortgage and lose your house and all of this. Just because you thought it was a good idea to hire this guy who was a great role player. <laughs> Finally, liability for personal injuries suffer. So, uh, watch out there. But, who cares? Well, you gotta take it seriously. Because you are gonna race risk, legal and financial ruin. And I'm sure if any of you are not from the United States, you might be saying, well, in my country, people don't sue each other over everything. And maybe that's true. Maybe you're lucky. But, um, you'll find that it's not quite so different where you live. And uh, here's a note. If you run a for-profit commercial LARP, you should be very concerned about some of these issues, particularly alcohol. This is a very, very serious deal for you. If you don't run a for-profit LARP, you should still care about it, especially a few of the specific areas we'll talk on. So here's the lawyer ferry. And uh, you can just imagine me, anytime you're planning a LARP and making your big, grand guidance documents and just saying, like, all these great things are going to happen, just imagine me with wings flying in as you sleep at night. <laughs> Play it safe. Well, I'd say, yeah, we don't want this to come back and bite us in the universe. Okay. So, here we go. This is the promise part. Those of you who are from a country that does, you do not have permission to fall asleep just because you're not from the United States. What is this? You've heard about, like, cultural imperialism? There's also, like, legal imperialism. <laughs> <laughs> 
So you might think, oh, I'm from Sudan. We don't do any of this. Oh, wow, it looks like basically two-thirds of the world almost has a legal system based on two. All this red and these variations are English common law. What's the English common law? Best way to imagine it is it's a judge who would sit there and instead of statute, you know, over the years, hundreds and hundreds of years, people come and say, this person came to my house and they tried to kill me, but I killed them first. And then my like, judge says, well, that makes sense. I mean, that's self-defense, kind of, but, and they come up with decisions about that. The United States, our whole law is based on that. Little did you know. So it's like that. And the uh, big one that goes against that, if you're curious, Napoleonic law. One of the greatest things Napoleon left us with is the Napoleonic law, which is very big in Africa and France and other parts of Europe, in which uh, we have seen that it's actually statutes. So they make, this is like the people who kind of play it by gut with your safety or consent decisions. People play it by gut, yeah. We're the English common law. But the people who write every little thing out think Napoleon, Napoleonic law. Napoleonic code. Depends where you want to go. But the point is, a lot of what I'm saying is based on English common law. Here in Canada, Greenland, all these other countries, some of which I know the names of, some of which I don't. If you're in one of these, then you're faced with that. And if you're not, United States, England, uh, they're pretty influential when it comes to things like the law and economics. Gotta watch out for that. Key points. Think very carefully before providing alcohol. Just gonna keep saying it over and over again. <laughs> LARP organizers can be found liable for the crimes of their volunteers and staff. It's crazy. I wouldn't have even have thought of that, even though it's a pretty basic legal principle. The thought didn't enter my mind until I researched this. And LARP organizers owe a legal duty to their participants to protect them. That's uh, I'm serious. But I know what you're thinking. I'm gonna keep talking about it, but I know what you're thinking about alcohol. Who invited the bus kill? <laughs> you can thank Sarah Lynn Bowman. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> always the case. <laughs> so, okay, let's talk about alcohol. For profit LARPs, commercial hosts. I think we all get what that means. You're trying to make money by running a LARP. Even if it's not your full time job, it doesn't matter. If you're trying to make $500 a year, you're for profit. You sell alcohol at face value. If you sell alcohol at a for profit LARP, you are like flashing danger zone. You can do it. There's nothing wrong with doing that. However, you're going to face it's just stricter and stricter standard. Ultimately, in any of these cases, you're going to come before a judge and say, Judge, it's not fair for me to be liable for this. That's really what it comes down to. And then some, some have law, some have case law. And the more for profit you are, the more likely the judge is going to say, You should have known better. But even non profit LARPs, even a group of five people who go and they do a freestyle LARP at somebody's house, they can get in trouble for giving alcohol away for free. So the exact opposite, you can still get in trouble. So I'd say, don't serve alcohol. If you have to serve alcohol, never under any circumstances give it to someone who is drunk. Or perhaps drunk. Perhaps tipsy. Had a few too many. Never, ever give it to someone like that. And you know what? You say, well, I'm just a LARP, or uh, I don't make much money. Or it's just my friends. The court shouldn't find me liable. I'm not a rich person. Charities have been found liable and have had their money stripped away under this. It's not just going after Enron and British Petroleum. It's other people, the, the, the judges whose money you don't want to lose. So liability for crimes and actions of your staff and their volunteers. There's an example, a few of you heard this already. Basically it comes down to are you acting, or is your staff or volunteer acting within the scope of you know, their staff doing or volunteer doing? So you'd say, oh, okay, so doing something I want them to do. No, it's not the standard. The standard is, does it seem like they're doing something that seems like in the scope of a volunteer? So there's an old case which is like, says if it's, they're acting out of lust, it doesn't count, but that's from the 1800s, and that doesn't really seem to follow anymore. <laughs> so really what we're looking at is, if you have a staffer, and your staffer, say, likes to trade XP for sexual favors, that's within the scope of their, that's within the scope of it, so they can be sued. They're, say, some 16-year-old is playing LARP, and her mom and dad find out that she's having sex with a you know, member of your staff in exchange for favors, they can sue you. And if you knew that it was happening, they can really sue you. <laughs> so staff is worse. You might say, volunteer, I can't believe. Wrong person's unpaid. It's still a similar standard, but admittedly, it's a little easier to get out of it with a volunteer. 
So again, you're a for-profit company that sells alcohol and you have paid staff. You need to take this very seriously. If there's a whiff of sexual impropriety about the person, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't serve alcohol at all. But if there's any whiff of it, you cannot afford to have this person on there. Because it's going to find out, tell me, um, Sir Alan Bowman, did you hear rumors that this person had ever had inappropriate sexual contact? Yeah, I mean, I've heard rumors about it before, but I didn't know. Oh, so, so you were aware. Well, I said I didn't know. You were aware. <laughs> <laughs> you brought a known predator onto your staff. <laughs> That's what happens, because you're going to go and stand in the defense attorney, or the defense, uh, plaintiff attorney, I guess in this case, who's going to rip into you. So you might want to think twice about who you allow to be staff. Um, so, one other point, which I said this in the last one, but... To really take home who and what is in the scope of your authority. Chef, juggling knives in the, in the kitchen. If, you're on a wait, if you own a restaurant, chef's juggling knives, somebody comes in, the chef drops in and stabs a person in the chest, that's within the scope of their work. Even though you would never would have wanted them to juggle knives, and you wouldn't even have wanted the person to go in the back room in the kitchen. It's still within the scope of it. So no broken stairs. Heaven's sake, no broken stairs. A broken stair, according to the article, which is very good, I think it's first election attendance in the conference, was that, you know, people who we all know, oh, this person's a great role player, but, you know, except for the fact that they're always trying to sleep with everyone, or they're always trying to be a predator, or they're always trying to creep on people, or they always stare at the women weirdly, but, you know, nothing's ever happened. Don't let these people be staff at your events. It sounds judgy. It sounds like, you know, they've never been convicted of anything. I'm just telling you, don't let them be staff at your events. Especially if you know, if you've heard about something, it's just going to be bad. Key point here is the fact that the predator is an amazing role player is not a defense of court. The judge really doesn't care. <laughs> really doesn't. So you're on the hook for protecting participants from certain dangers, shifting a bit. You've got to exercise reasonable affirmative care to see that a site is safe. That means you rent an Airbnb, there's a little pothole there. You've got to tell people about it. <coughs> if you know it exists, and someone gets hurt, you're liable. If you should have known it existed and you didn't know it existed, you're liable. So pay attention. Go around, look, and this is a super cement clear area of the law. You will lose this if you argue this. You, when you, you know, it's just, it's important that you look and you see and you pay attention. And just for fun, I thought this was an interesting question. Is it a defense in court that say, like, well, sure, I touched this person inappropriately, but it wasn't me. It was my Tamitsi, you know, vampire character, like, that's like his thing. Or I was a Malkavian. I, I was a Malkavian. My uh, madness was that I grope women. It wasn't, my, it wasn't my character. Does that work as a defense? No. <laughs> The judge does not care that your Malkavian has this weird thing and that it, you know, great role play has started from this deranged derangement, from this derangement of your Malkavian. It doesn't matter. There's actually very disturbing cases on this. People have used role play to molest children and stuff, and so it was clearly done that uh, that does not hold court. So, let's conclusion. Our organizers need to take their legal liability seriously, particularly for profit. If you're a for-profit LARP organizer and you want to make a little extra money selling alcohol, I would just say don't do it. Especially don't give it to a minor. And if you're a, whatever a minor means in wherever you live. If you are a, if you're just having fun, you know, it's just Sarah and I having a LARP. Like we did. Like we did. <laughs> and a 16-year-old, you know, our 16-year-old friend comes. We can find a 16-year-old over for some reason. And uh, Sarah gives this person beer, and drinks beer, and then he drives off and crashes. Guess who's going down? Sarah's going down. It doesn't matter, even if, even if it's like a volunteer, it's like a big brother, you know, big brother, big little sister thing, and you're just trying to mentor this person. She wants nothing but to help this person. She's saving them from poverty, but she gives them beer. It's too bad. Sarah's going down. Sarah's going to Sarah's house. <laughs> And me too, potentially, if I was involved. <laughs> so don't do it. If you must give alcohol, 
Do not give it to someone who's intoxicated. Or looks like they're intoxicated. And in fact, I have a very strict rule about how many you give and watching that. So, also crimes and actions of your staff. You need to be very careful about this. Just don't put bad people on your staff. Don't let bad people volunteer for you either. And especially don't pay bad people to help to be on your staff. It's just, it's not worth it. It doesn't matter how good they are, it's not worth it. I'm going to nudge you because I'm also, uh, you're out of time and I'm, I'm, I'm terrified. <laughs> so, so the last comment you want to wrap up with. Yes, we do. So you also finally owe a legal duty to your participants to protect them from certain dangers, known dangers. Protect yourself. But there's further research needed. Of course, what I'm doing here is just telling you everything that's wrong. We need people to come and tell you a little more about affirmative steps you can do. Just the word of danger. Some people who know a little bit say, oh, I'll create a company and run it through the company. That helps. But there's a thing called piercing the corporate veil by which they can still come after you. So be very careful. And uh, that's it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.